business of weighing uh, social value and social cost. So we reject the state's argument that violent video games are a category of unprotected speech. Well, where does that leave us? That leaves us at square one. This is a content-based restriction on speech, singling out the content of speech on the basis of its content for restriction. Can't sell it to minors. And the court then employed standard First Amendment analysis in dealing with um, this restriction, compelling interest and narrow tailoring. Justice Scalia's opinion does not, I think, fairly um, confront whether the state had a compelling interest in restricting violent minors' access to violent video games. But it's clear from the sarcasm uh, that Scalia uses in his opinion that he really did not think that the state had a very strong interest, not compelling. He did point out that there was real, no real showing of harm from the video games. Yes, there were these minimal effects, short-term feelings of aggression and so on, but those were no different in kind from exposure to violence on television, violent movies, um, Saturday morning cartoons for little kids. Um, and uh, you couldn't identify that violent video games had any kind of special or different um, harm associated with it. So he also pointed out that the law was significantly under-inclusive in another way, again sarcastically, he said that California was perfectly willing to leave this dangerous, mind-altering material in the hands of children so long as one parent or an uncle or an aunt thinks it's okay. I mean, if this material is so toxic, why didn't the state just outlaw it across the board? It's too easy for kids to get their hands on it uh, with a cooperating relative in the household. Um, the states do Scalia acknowledges, have the power to protect children from harm. That's an interest that we will encounter time and again in the rest of this court, where the government is enacting laws in the supposed interest of protecting children from harm. Yeah, there's an interest in protecting children from harm, but the government has no free-floating power to restrict the ideas to which children may be exposed. Why isn't this treated like obscenity, um, this violence? In Scalia's view, is because we didn't have any tradition, we haven't had any tradition in this country of treating violent material as unprotected by free speech principles. Obscenity from the very get-go, we believed that obscenity, however it was defined, wasn't protected by the First Amendment. But we're dealing here with speech that is not sexual in any way and has no history of uh, being unprotected. And in fact, the history shows that children in this country have been exposed to all kinds of violence, from Grimm's fairy tales, which is somewhat violent, to the Odyssey, to Dante, and so on. Um, Justice Alito was uh, highly upset by the Scalia opinion. He actually concurred in the decision. He, joined by Chief Justice Roberts, agreed that the law was unconstitutional, but not on Scalia's analysis at all. Alito and Roberts found that the law was vague, that it was void for vagueness because nobody could be sure what appealing to the morbid or deviant uh, interest was. And so people couldn't guide themselves to steer clear of the prohibited zone. That was Alito's point of view. Uh, but he went off and did his own research, and he found these games to have astounding violence in which victims were dismembered, decapitated, disemboweled, set on fire, chopped into little pieces. There was blood gushing, splattering, and pooling. And Alito wasn't shy about revealing his own personal hostility to this kind of material and to the, what he viewed as the moral lessons uh, taught by some of these games. He said there is no antisocial theme too base for some in the video game industry to exploit. For example, in some games it's possible to reenact the murders at Columbine, the Virginia Tech massacre, the assassination of President Kennedy. Uh, you can engage in ethnic cleansing by gunning down African Americans, Latinos, or Jews. And this is pretty awful stuff. Scalia responds to um, Alito by saying that, yeah, uh, playing these games is different from reading Dante. We'll agree with that. Uh, reading Dante is unquestionably more cultured and intellectually edifying than playing Mortal Kombat. But there, these cultural and intellectual differences are not constitutional ones. Crudely violent video games, tawdry television shows, and cheap novels and magazines are no less a form of speech than the divine comedy uh, and require strict scrutiny. Uh, Scalia responded to Alito's examples of all the blood and, and gore by saying, Alito, he recounts all these disgusting video games in order to disgust us. But disgust is not a valid basis for restricting expression. And neither, in my view, is the fact that um, some of these games teach immoral lessons, like that it's fun to kill innocent people or maim people who are unlike you. I think that uh, both the California legislature and Alito were more likely to be animated by their moral opposition to the lessons taught by these games than to the fact that these games cause actual harm to anyone. Um, the um, Alito opinion said that he would not foreclose a better written statute, remember he found it vague, to deal with what he termed a potentially serious social problem, the effect of exceptionally violent video games on impressionable minds who often spend countless hours immersed in the alternative worlds that these games create. And then there were two dissents. Surprising that um, Justice Stephen Breyer, generally liberal, dissented, but he did a lot of his own research and looked into all of the studies on video game and violence and found some that supported the state's view that there were problems about creating aggression. Uh, and he said that while there isn't any causal link between playing games and, and actual harm, uh, and the studies were contradictory, that the state legislature ought, to, legislature ought to be able to rely on the studies that it did have, that it was a reasonable legislative judgment that the courts should not interfere with. And as 
too often happens with Justice Breyer. He was too willing to give the government the benefit of the doubt. Um, and then Justice Thomas dissented, Clarence Thomas, and as you might predict, the thesis of his dissent was originalism. What would the framers have thought about a law um, that, uh, yeah, that came up in the argument when, when, when Scalia was berating some lawyer and, and Alito says, I think, I think what Justice Scalia wants to know is how James Madison would have viewed violent video games. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Thomas, uh, as an originalist, wanted to know what the framers would have done, and the framers, in his view, would not have protected any speech that was directed at children unless the speaker went through the parents, that the parents were absolute monarchs uh, who governed their children, and children wouldn't independently be exposed to any speech, shouldn't independently be exposed to any speech that the parents didn't approve. And he viewed violent video games as another category of unprotected speech, speech that bypasses the parents and their absolute authority over the children. Scalia responded to that. He didn't say, I'm abandoning originalism. He said that um, Thomas's historical evidence was wrong, was not right as a matter of history. And in any event, the California law didn't attempt to enforce parental control over speech. It supplanted parental control with government control over the speech. One of the striking things about the video games decision is the weird lineup of justices, uh, how this case smashed the usual ideological lineup of the justices. You've got Scalia writing the opinion, joined by the three women, liberals, and by Kennedy. Uh, and then Alito disagreeing with Scalia's analysis, federal, federal, federal conservatives splitting up, uh, and joined by Roberts, another rock-ribbed conservative, a dissent by Thomas, parting company with his ideological soulmate, Scalia, and a dissent by the liberal Breyer. And how to explain this? Well, I say in the reader, I think a hard First Amendment case like this one, where there's a collision of free speech with other societal values, doesn't have much to do with partisan politics. It doesn't evoke the usual five to four political conservative to political liberal split. Uh, rather, these cases have to do with one's tolerance for expression that really disturbs people. Uh, and it also has to do with one's trust in government to make sound judgments about what should be restricted and what shouldn't be. And the unwillingness to accept offensive, unsettling speech and faith in government's ability to sort out worthy from unworthy speech that means the end of free speech. And the video games decision is a good reminder of that. Questions about today's stuff? No? OK, Tuesday, Tuesday we switch gears again. No more injurious speech. But do we have a First Amendment right of access to find what our government is up to?